Okay, let's settle down. Good evening, class. Today we're going to have a teach back on the chapters that you were supposed to read before the midterm exam. I'll start first with the acid-base disorders. As a future nurse, you will be handling patients with acid-base disorders. It could either be acidosis or alkalosis. It could either be respiratory or what? Metabolic. The general rule here is that if it involves the lung, then obviously it has to be what? Respiratory. Other organ systems, like stomach, small, large intestine, pancreas, rectum, or endocrine organs, like when you have diabetic patients, which does not involve the lung, is considered what? Metabolic, right? Uh, why is this important? As I said, this will come out in your nursing board exam. You will be handling patients with these conditions. The important thing is to know the normal values, normal pH 7.35 to 7.45 of your blood. Anything below 7.35 is acidic. Anything above 7.45 is what? Alkaline. Where did you learn all of these? Anatomy and physiology, right? Normal PCO2 values ranges from what? 35 to 45. Bicarbonate values ranges from 20 to 26. Obviously, if it's above 45, it's high. If it's below 35 for PCO2, it's low. And on the other hand, bicarbonate, anything below 22 is low. Above 26 is high. PO2, or partial pressure of oxygen, ranges from 80 to 100. If you have low levels of oxygen in your blood, it will be less than 80. So just make note, below 735, acidic. Above 745, it is alkaline. That is a normal pH of your blood, okay? Now, let's give an example. When it comes to the lung, exchange of gases takes place. What is that? Oxygen is brought in, and what do you bring out? Carbon dioxide, right? In other words, if this is the larynx here, the vocal cords are here, it's the trachea here, primary bronchus, secondary bronchus, tertiary bronchus, and then, of course, bronchioles, lined with smooth muscles. All of these are made of cartilages, trachea, larynx, primary bronchus, secondary bronchus, tertiary bronchus. In the bronchioles, what do you find in the wall? Smooth what? Muscles. Muscles, and then you have the air sac. You have millions of these in your lung. You have two lungs, one on the right, one on the left. It has a what? Pulmonary what? Capillary. It's a capillary a small blood vessel. The pulmonary capillary comes from the pulmonary what? Artery. And this carries what? The blood coming from the right side of the heart, particularly what? The right ventricle. And you know it carries the red blood cell carries carbon dioxide, right? Basic anatomy physiology. So from the right side of the heart, the blood goes into the pulmonary trunk, right pulmonary and left pulmonary artery, then it goes into the capillaries here. What happens to the CO2? From high concentration to what? To low. What will happen? What do you do? Exhale. What do you exhale? CO2. And what do you inhale? O2. O2 goes here. The red blood cell will have a new passenger. Who is the new passenger? O2. Where does the O2 go? Capillaries. And then eventually go where? Pulmonary what? Veins. And where do the pulmonary veins go? Left atrium of the heart, left ventricle, then aorta, and to all the other organs of the body. You see me? Good. So, bear in mind, if you combine CO2 plus H2O, you form what? What is H2CO3? Carbonic acid. Is carbonic acid an acid? Of course. That's why it's called carbonic acid. If you combine carbon dioxide with water, H2CO2 plus O1 will give you O3. Is carbonic acid acid? Yes. In other words, if you have high levels of carbonic acid, then the patient becomes what? Acidic. Now, what could give rise to that? Very simple. Pneumonia, COPD, CRLD, anything that affects the lung. You have a lot of mucus secretions. What will the mucus do? 
block the airway. It will. The moment you block the airway, can the carbon dioxide get out? The carbon dioxide cannot get out. It remains here, it goes back where? To the blood. What happens to the PCO2 level in acidosis patients? High or low? Greater than? 45. Why did it go up? Because it was not able to go out. Why? Because there was what? A lot of secretions. Does that make sense? And the secretions block the flow of carbon dioxide. The blood caused it to go back to where it came from, which was what? The blood. So you would expect the PCO2 level to be greater than 45. That's say 47, 48. What about the pH? Less than 0.1. 735 because that is acidic and PCO2 in the blood will be high. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Okay. So anything therefore in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease combined with asthma, bronchitis, emphysema automatically ban respiratory acidosis. Does that make sense? So what will Dr. Gamma tell you to do? Nurse? I want you to suction what? Secretion. Why? Because we want to get to it of what is causing the obstruction. Two, will I prescribe a bronchodilator? Yes. And that drug will make the smooth muscles relax or relax? Yes. When the smooth muscles relax here, they will bronco what? Yes. That will save the life of my patient or save the life of my patient? If there is an infection, am I going to cover for antibiotics? And how do I know what is the name of the organism? Sputum what? Sculpture and sensitivity testing, spit or sputum? <coughs> Sterile container or clean container? And you are ready for your bird exam for nursing, okay? Do you understand? Will I provide pulmonary therapy? Yes. Of course, nebulization. You know, nebulization. Will I prescribe a mucolytic drug? Yes. A drug that will dissolve the mucus so that the mucus will not stick, rather, it will be dissolved and it will be easy for it to be expectorated. Do you understand? Okay? Now, key word for alkalosis, anxiety attack. What happens when you have an anxiety attack? Do you hyperventilate or hypoventilate? Hyper. Hyper. For example, oh my God, my boyfriend broke up with me. What do I do now? <laughs> What's the answer? Find another boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's an industry. How many boys are here? <laughs> or men? Okay? No, I'm just kidding. So what do you tell them? An anxiety attack, you're hyperventilating here, you're hypo what? Ventilating. Hypo because you're not able to provide enough oxygen here too. Oxygen is not able to go in. Carbon is not able to go out. Hyperventilate, bang! Hyperventilate, bang! Anxiety attack, bang! Oh my God, the midterm exam will be in the next 20 minutes. I'm not ready. <laughs> what will I do now? Every time you hyperventilate, you're blowing off excess what? Carbon dioxide. If you blow off excess carbon dioxide, think of carbon dioxide, think of CO2, think of what? Acid. Do you understand? Now, so what will be the effect here? Acidic or alkaline? You're blowing off excess CO2. Of course, it's called respiratory alkalosis. It involves the lung. Your pH will be what? Greater than 7.45. Your PCO2 will be what? CO2 will be high or low? Low because you have gotten rid of what? The CO2. It will be less than what? 35 here. Here, greater than 45 because you are retaining CO2. Here, you're blowing it off less than 35. Normal values, 35 to 45. Are you expected to memorize for the board exam? Yes, you will. What do I do with my patient? Am I going to give them a brown bag? Oh my God, what will I do now? I'm alone, I'm so lonely. Give them a brown bag. What happens if you give them a brown bag? Every time they exhale, what happens to the CO2? Re-inhale, will that help them? Yes. Am I going to give this young woman who's 18 years old volume? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. 
She needs to chill. <laughs> she needs to be sedated. Five milligrams is fine. What about if I give him 1,000 milligrams, she will die? <laughs> so just five milligrams is fine. Do you understand? Something to sedate, to make her relax, despite the fact that her boyfriend broke up with her. Right? It's called to sedate, anti, to sedate, okay? Now, what about acidosis? So anything that has not evolved a lot, I'll give you an example. What is found in your stomach? Hydrochloric acid, which is acid. Pretend this is the acid. And I vomit. <laughs> Where is the acid now? On the floor. So what happens to me? Do I become alkaline or acidic? <laughs> oh my God, you're so smart. So what is vomiting therefore? Metabolic alkalosis. And in such, you would expect the pH to be what? Greater than 7.45, right? Because it's alkaline. Because the acid came out. On the other hand, your intestinal and secretions, when you have poo poo, when you have diarrhea, it contains base or bicarbonate. What happens? The base in diarrhea goes into the toilet bowl. The base is there, you become what? Of course. In diarrhea, your intestinal and pancreatic secretions, secretions, I do not know how to spell secretions, are base. Therefore, you get rid of the base, it's on the toilet bowl, you become what? Acidic. Your pH will be what? Less than? That's at 7.35. Alkaline, greater than 7.45. Now, I will no longer go into the compensations. Just bear in mind, the lung works with the kidney. When you are acidic, what will the kidney do? Retain more what? Bicarbonate, what is bicarbonate? B for bicarbonate, B for base. Because more base will get control this, compensate. On the other hand, if you are alkaline, what will the kidney do with the base, which is bicarbonate? Release in the urine. Same thing here. If you're acidic, you want to retain the base, which is bicarbonate, ACO3 minus. If you're alkaline, you want to get rid of the base where? In the wee wee. You understand? So, what is the foundation of nursing? Anatomy and physiology. If you do not know this, you are in deep S H I T stool. <laughs> Learning requires understanding and the application of the knowledge to have learned in anatomy and physiology. If you did not learn anything in A and P, you will be what? L-O-S-T in this class. What is L-O-S-T? Lost. Do you understand? Okay. Is that clear, class? So, now, we will move on to, because I have limited time. Okay, we say COPD. COPD, obstruction of the airway is common to all of them. Asthma, bronchitis, emphysema, right? Asthma, where is the problem? Where is the pathology? In the bronchioles. What is found in the bronchioles? Smooth muscle. What is the pathogenesis? A child who is asthmatic is exposed to an allergen, develops an allergy, IgE is involved. The allergen, like a pollen, triggers what? It's muscles contracting in the smooth muscles wall. You have bronco what? Smooth muscles contract. You have bronco what? Spasm. And you end up with bronco what? Constriction. When your airways contract, will there be enough oxygen? No. If you're gasping for air. That's why it's an example of respiratory acidosis. <coughs> so there is area obstruction. Respiratory acidosis will occur. Do you understand? Yes. Smooth muscles, bronchioles. Where is the problem in bronchitis? Of course, the bronchi. And what do the bronchitis contain? 
Do all kinds of good things, but... Oh, cilia. The cilia. Yeah. Very good. And what is the purpose of the cilia? To, 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 to clear the mucus. Right? Clear the mucus. But when you smoke, what happens when you smoke? It destroys the cilia. The cilia is not able to remove the mucus, to remove mucus retains where in the airway causing obstruction. The one example a while ago, in respiratory acidosis. Do you understand? Okay? The damage could be permanent. Now, emphysema. So this is called the blue one. Bloater. And now you were supposed to do your what do you call this? Signature assignment. What is the definition of chronic bronchitis? Productive cough of how many months and how many years? Oh my god, you're so smart. I expect that to be in your signature assignment. Answer? Failure to do so will make your score go down. Because that is the definition of emphysema. How many months? What kind of cough? Productive or productive? The mucus and phlegm. And how many years? How many successive years? Very smart kids. That's a definite. Blue. Is it a blue bloater or a blue bloater? Blue. And this is what? Pink puffer. And if the problem is in the bronchi, if the problem is the smooth muscles causing bronchus spasm and bronchus constriction, can leading to wheezing here. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> is he having a good time? He will die. Pink puffer, the problem is where? Wall. Of the air sac, yes. right? Remember? Trachea, bronchus, secondary bronchus, tertiary bronchus, bronchial with both muscles, air sac, pulmonary capillaries. The problem is in the wall of the air sac or alveolar wall. Now, what is the pathology here, class? Anybody? What is wrong with patients with emphysema? The alveolar sacs. Uh, yes. And there's more mucus production in the More dysfunction, yes, what? Why not? Because they're full of the mucus. Yes? Isn't it because they can't exhale too much? Anybody else? I will answer my own question. Excuse me, I'm burping. Have you heard the one deficiency of something? Alpha, oh my God, I give the clue and they come up with the answer, Jesus Christ, man. Deficient what? Alpha, one, anti, trypsin. What is trip, what is anti against trypsin? What is trypsin? Trypsin is a what? Protolytic, putrolytic what? Protolytic what? Protolytic what? Is that not in your notes? Is that not in your PowerPoint slides? Did you read your PowerPoint slides? Which I gave you for free? How come you don't know that? What do you mean by protolytic? Lytic means breakdown or dissolve. What will you dissolve? Proteins where? In the wall. That is the answer I wanted to hear from you, but because there is no more time, I have to answer my own question. <laughs> Deep learning means studying on your own. Of course, I'm here to explain. That's my role. The main question you always ask yourselves, what, where, when, and why? Why is there damage to the alveolar wall? Because of the action of trypsin, which happens to be a protrolytic enzyme. Proteo means protein, where is that found in the wall of the air sac or the alveolus? And lytic means this enzyme destroys the wall. So, what does anti mean against the enzyme that destroys the wall? Right? Alpha 1 anti. Do you, is, this, is this useful? Yes. But the problem in patients with emphysema, there is what? A deficiency in this useful substance. And if you are deficient, can you protect yourself? No. Now, do, do all people smoke develop emphysema? No. How many have smoke here? Do you have emphysema? Oh, no. Right. Not yet. Maybe because you have enough of these. For those of you who like this, 
What do you think we do? What will Dr. Gamma prescribe these patients? If you are suffering from alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency? Of course, we give you that. It's an amazing don't you love anatomy and physiology. If you know what is normal, then what do you do if it's an abnormal condition? That's like patients with chronic renal disease. They lack erythropoietin because erythropoietin is produced by what organ? Kidney. And if you go into chronic kidney failure, your kidney will not be able to produce. And therefore, if there's a lack of erythropoietin, you could have seen that the red bone will produce what? Red blood cells. And therefore, if you lack red blood cell formation, it's called anemia of chronic kidney disease. And what do you think Dr. Gamo will give the patient? The synthetic form of erythropoietin. And what is the name of that synthetic form? Hmm? Procrit, yes. Were you, were you the one who gave the answer? Procrit last time. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, right? Don't you love an abdomen for shoulder? It gives you the answer to an exam. Even if you do not know the answer, but because you know your anatomy and physiology, you can answer, get a perfect score in the nursing board exam. Because your anatomy and physiology background is so very good. So what do we give? We give this. Does that make sense? Treatment, same thing. Broken dilator, mucolytic drugs, nebulization. In the presence of infection, we give what? Antibiotics. Does that make sense? Okay, now, CRLD, very simple. Here, the common denominator is area of suction, restriction of what? Chest expansion, restrict. Chronic restrictive lung disease, such as what? Pneumothorax, hemothorax. Which one involves the presence of air in the pleural cavity? Pneumothorax. What about blood? Hemothorax. When would that happen? What do you normally find in the pleural cavity? Pleural fluid secreted by the pleura. The pleura is a serous membrane that secretes serous fluid. What is the name of the membrane? Pleura. Visceral and parietal. Parietal pleura is attached to the thoracic wall here, and the visceral pleura is on the surface of the lung. The space between the two is called pleural cavity and pleural space. What is found there? Pleural fluid, purpose, lubrication, natural KY. What do you mean by lubricate? Reduce friction so that there will be no pain every time I inhale and exhale. The problem is that in the presence of pleuritis or pleurisy, can there be excessive amount of pleural fluid? Yes, yes. Can that be a problem? It will compress the lung, it, it's hard to, what is that called? Pleural effusion. Did I put that in the study guide, effusion? Yeah. Effusion and it's bad for you. <laughs> now it is called effusion, E-F-F-U-S-I-O-N, restricts the lung expansion. What will Dr. Gamma do? Insert a needle here, perform what we call thoracentesis. What do I do with the specimen? Put it in the sterile container, two paces. I give it to my wife, microbiology lab, for culture and sensitivity because it could be an infection. Or to my pathology friends, my colleagues in medicine. Because why? It could also be due to what? Cancer, malignancy. Whenever you have pleural effusion and you do not know where is the cause. Breast cancer with pleural effusion, that is possibly the cause. Prostate cancer that has metastasized to the lung, pleural effusion. How many have been shot in the chest? <coughs> Stop. If you get stabbed, got shot wound, can you develop pneumohemothorax? Yes. Yes? Now why will you die? Because now the air or the blood occupies space, will it compress the lung? Yes. yes. Can the lung be able to expand? No. Will the lung collapse or what we call atelectasis? Is this going to come out in your board exam? Yes. Atelectasis is collapse of the lung secondary to the presence of air called pneumothorax or blood hemothorax. Are we going to drain that air or blood? Yes. Are we going to insert a chest tube yes. with a pneumovacuous device? Yes. It came out in the nursing board exam. It's a device that has calibrations measuring amount of blood or air coming out. I'm sorry, hemovac. Okay? Now, no, plural vac, plural vac. Evacuate, plural content evacuation, okay? So once you put a chest tube, can that allow re-expansion of the lung? Yes. Now what about tuberculosis of the lung, what pneumonia of the lung due to tuberculosis or any form of pneumonia? Can that be restrictive too? It affects the lung expansion, right? Tuberculosis of the lung is due to the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria. 
Airborne. Mode of transmission. Right? Airborne. Now, the question now is, what is the best test for this? Sputum culture. Always the best. Any form of infection, the be CS. Sputum. But there are other tests designed to find out if you're exposed or not. What is the name of the test? Manto. 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 I think we had a, did we not have a, yeah. uh, what do you call this? Uh, what do you call the thing? Call that what? Um, oh, wait, wait, uh, I, I'm going to tell you. It's called what? <laughs> it's Manto. Manto test, right? So this Manto test <laughs> is designed to what? Skin test, because you want to find out if the patient is exposed or not, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we inject on the patient? Okay, I will answer my own question. There's limited time. Our proctor is ready here. You have five more minutes. It's called tubercular, otherwise known as PPD stands for what? Purified protein derivative. Where was this taken? Of course, from the bacteria itself. But it's not harm, it's harmless. Once you inject the part of the, I think the cell wall of the bacteria, of microbacterial tuberculosis, you will react. How would you know if it's a possible action for a man to test that you are exposed to tuberculosis of the lung? Yes, yes? After 48 hours, there will be what? Redness, erythema, and most importantly, it should be what? Indurated. What is induration? Hard and raised. What is positive? More than positive for what? 10 mm or more. Are you going to bring with you a tape measure, future nurses? Or are you going to use your eyeball to calculate? Tape measure. You understand? When is the earliest time that you must let the patient come to you for examination? Very good. 48 hours. If I injected at 6 in the morning of Monday, let the pill come back Wednesday at 6 a.m. Do you understand? Okay? So what do you inject? PPD or tuberculin or purified protein derivative, right? But it only means one thing. She is probably, or he is probably exposed. People like us who work in the hospital, are we exposed to TB patients? Yeah. A positive skin test or mantle test, therefore, will require the next step, which is what? Chest x-ray. Do you understand? Okay. You know what is scoliosis? Can it affect the lung? Yes, that's why it's chronic restrictive lung disease. Okay. Now, with two minutes, one thing you have to remember is that in fluids, it can be overload or what? Deficit. How can you become deficient in fluid? Very simple. Either to the wee wee or to the poo poo or to the boo boo. <laughs> Water loss, deficit, is what? Vomiting, diarrhea, and what? Polyuria. So this is an example of a concept map. You have to organize your brain. Students do not do well because their brain is full of trash. Get <laughs> kidding? They memorize irre irrelevant things. You have to seek that goal. What is that goal? Knowledge that you can apply. When do you develop polyuria? Diabetes mellitus, diabetes insipidus, what else? Addison's disease. I hope you don't mind if I answer my own question. <laughs> okay, do you understand why in Addison's? Mm -hmm. Why? Okay, low aldosterone. What does aldosterone do? Water. Retain water, reabsorb water. So, for Overload would be, what is Cushing's? High what? Increase of aldosterone. Retain what? Water. So is Cushing's the opposite of Addison's? Here you retain water because high levels of aldosterone, fluid volume overload. Here you have low levels of aldosterone. Instead of retaining the water, what do you develop? Polyuria through the kidney. And when you lose water, you develop fluid volume deficit. What would be the effect on your blood pressure? What would be the effect in your blood volume? Can you therefore develop hypovolemic shock? Yes. yes. What about diarrhea? You lose water in your stool. Can you imagine losing two liters of water in your stool? How much blood do you have in your body? Six liters. If you lose six liters minus two liters in the poo-poo, six minus two will give you what? 
four liters of blood. Is that what we mean by hypovolemia? Can that lead to hypovolemic shock? And what is the first organ that will be affected? The kidney, you can go into renal failure, ARF, and you will rest in six feet under the ground. And permanent resident of the forest. <laughs> so what do we do, my dear students? Are we going to replace the fluids in diarrhea? Are we going to rehydrate the patient by giving them IV fluids and electrolytes? If they're not vomiting, can we give fluids to the mouth? Yes, but if they're vomiting, <laughs> can we give oral replacement? Have you heard of hydrate? And the ones we give to children, pedialyte. Do you understand? Vomiting, the same thing. Wait, sorry, what did you heard after your diabetes? On I don't understand. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what did you hear after your diabetes? Like, what was the first thing you heard after your diabetes? Like, what did you hear 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 after your diabetes? Like, what is it that amazing? That's why patients with heart failure, do you see that their feet are swollen? Are they retaining water? Am I still good in the, the, the video? Uh, still on time? Yes. Okay. Heart failure, the heart is not pumping properly, it's failing, therefore you retain water. You have bipedal edema, you have pulmonary edema in left sided heart failure. You're retaining a lot of fluids. What happens to your volume? Increased blood volume, not good for you. Liver failure, heart failure, kidney failure. What is the opposite of diabetes insipidus? S-I-A-D-H, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. What will this hormone do? It's producing the hypothalamus stored where? I will answer my own question because there's no more time for serial of the pituitary gland. What does this hormone do? Retain water with the kidney, just like aldosterone. Therefore, here you have what? High EDH, that's why you retain the water, fluid overload. Here, low what? Insipidus. Low ADH, are you able to retain the water? No, what will the kidney do? Polyuria, what is poly? Increase what? Urea. Be weak. And if you have a lot of water coming out from your sexy booty, eh? you that fellow of what? <laughs> of course. Are we going to do fluid replacement here? Yeah. Yes. Are we going to do fluid replacement and overload? No. You must be crazy. <laughs> they already have too much fluid. That is how to fail the nursing board exam. Overload, no more fluid, please. You even give what? Lasix? What do Lasix do? Are you ready for the midterm exam? No. I can tell. You are ready? Yes? Can you very quickly go over why diabetes mellitus is deficient? Okay. In diabetes mellitus, it has to do with the nephron. In diabetes mellitus, you lack what hormone? Insulin. And therefore, there's high levels of what? Glucose. Glucose in the blood. Okay. If you remember, Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting duct. The blood vessels are here. What's the name of the duct? Glomerulus. Afferent efferentil. If the blood levels are high of glucose in the blood vessels, is it possible the amount of glucose will also spill into the nephron? Yes. This is where the urine is formed, yellow, blood, red. When there's a lot of glucose here, G for gamo, I'm sorry. <laughs> and very sweet, that's why, glucose sweet. Dr. Gamo, the glucose is here. There's too much glucose in the urine. Remember the word osmosis? You have a lot of glucose, what will it do with the water? It will attract what? Water, water goes here, then there, and that's why there is what? More water coming out. It's called osmotic diuresis. If you happen to be a diabetic patient, you have the three Ps. Polyuria, because of what I just explained to you. And if you lose a lot of water in your wee-wee, you become thirsty. Who will detect that? Your hypothalamus. Polyuria. 
Polydipsia is increased thirst. P-O-L-Y-D-I-P-S-I-A. And what's the third one? Polyphagia. Why? Because the cell, the glucose is not able to enter the cell because the lack of insulin prevents that. Therefore, the, the cell in the body will always think that you are always hungry. That's why you always have increased appetite. It's called polyphagia. Okay? Are we ready to rumble? Yes, you are. It's all in the mind. And where is my stop recording?